Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're doing the next instalment of Get Good at Blender. This time really trying to focus a bit on topology and how we can adapt and change our topology depending on the shape. Make sure you've had a look at the previous episodes and also some of my beginner courses. If they're not enough for you, then try out the paid for course by CG Boost. I can thoroughly recommend it. And for this one, it's a good idea to try out the Rocket course. These links can be found in the description, on my website and in the playlists on my channel. So let's take a look at the first shape. This should be fairly simple and we'll start as the base for our Lego brick. So have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you found that fairly straightforward. I'll move this across to the side, G then Y, Shift A to add a default cube. Now hopefully you've gone about it by doing an auto mirror and mirroring down the X and Y axis. I'm going to do it a very slightly different way today, just in case anybody's getting confused with the auto mirror and the mirror tools in general. So I'm going to build this corner and then mirror it afterwards. Okay, let's zoom into my cube with full stop or period key on the numpad, into edit mode, and I'll put myself in solid mode, it's a bit easier to see. Three to select faces, and let's grab that face. E to extrude it out. And I want it roughly the same size, so it's a good idea to go to top view and look at the blender grids. Even better, if I undo that, I can use snapping and set my snapping to increment. Now when I press G to grab, it's going through the increments. If I press X to make sure it stays on the X, I can go all the way to the end and snap to the end nice and easily. Therefore I know my shape's going to be uniform. Now let's do a loop cut down the middle. Control R and then double F click and select these top faces and press I for inset. Now mine's automatically insetting, but you might need to come down here and tick individual. Now I can extrude upwards. I've still got snapping turned on, so it jumped. I can turn that off up here, or you can see the shortcut is shift tab. And then I can grab in the Z axis and move them to where I need them. It can be pretty rough at this stage. Okay, so let's go to top view quickly and I want to mirror it this way and this way. So I'm just gonna turn my mirror on now. So add modifier and mirror. Okay, it's looking a bit strange what's going on. I've got it in the x-axis, I need it in the y-axis as well, so let's do that, and we can't see any difference there. However, when I grab all my objects and press G to start moving them around, now we can see some changes. So watch out for that. When you're using the mirror, make sure you're not just on top of each other like this, and it looks like nothing's happening, but there is a mirror there. So move it out into position, and see what you've got. It's all based around the pivot point in the middle here, or the center point. And you'll notice in edit mode, the center point doesn't move when I move all my objects. So one other thing we'll need to do is delete these inside faces here, here, and here. Because if I turn clipping on now, and go to top view again, I can bring them together. And actually it'd be a good idea to turn snapping on now, so I'll undo that, turn snapping back on, and bring them back in, and turn it off again. That means they're all completely uniform, but I have some faces in the middle. If I press Z on my keyboard and go to wireframe mode, you can see that face there, there, and there. And we don't want faces in the middle of our meshes like that. So let's go across and delete them all. So delete faces. And there we go, we've got our shape ready for making into a Lego brick. Okay, so that one was fairly easy. Now you've got to try this one. Okay, so I've brought my old one back and I've got to turn it into this. So the obvious thing to do is to add a subdivision surface modifier. So let's do that straight away. And you can see it hasn't worked. That's because there's no supporting loops, which we talked about in the last episode. So we'll go about adding some supporting loops and hopefully come out with something like this. Let's just up the viewport count for the subdivision surface modifier. I'll put it on three. It's a fairly low poly model anyway, so my viewport can handle it fairly easily. Let's go into edit mode and start adding some edge loops. So let's put one down the bottom, that's fairly obvious, one down there, to give some stability to the bottom here. And what I might do is select these two, inset them with I, and turn off individual and boundary. That way I can get an edge loop going around here nice and easily, and press delete on those faces. Now I've got an inside lip like this. Now some of you might have thought, maybe I'll select this edge loop down here, so two to go to edge mode and select these two edges and bevel them. Oh, but actually we need the top one here as well, don't we? So let's grab that now as well and bevel that. Oh, now we're getting problems. Can you see the bevel overlapping itself? So I can't go very far with my bevel before it overlaps itself. Okay, so I'll undo that. And what I'll do is I'll bevel them together. 
So this one, this one, and this one, and I'll bevel them all together, and then I shouldn't have the same problems. I'll select this one as well. Control B. That's working okay. It might be an idea to have a middle edge loop like this as well, so I've used my wheel mouse there and double click. Okay, so that looks okay. We've got some slight problems in here, which we'll fix in a bit, but our bevel is just about working there. So let's come into here and select this edge loop around here and this one around here and control B and bevel those. And that's working okay. Now, because theoretically the top edge isn't an edge loop, I can press Alt left click on one of them and it will only select that one because it's actually a face. So if I press three and select these two faces and then go back to edge mode, it will select those edges then. Now I can press Control B. Okay, so it's not looking too bad, but we have some slight issues. In here, we've got to do some tidying up. Apart from that, the topology is reasonably okay. The most important thing is that you can move these edge loops. If I press Alt, left click, and G then Z, you can see that moving up and doing a reasonable job. The same with this one. If I press GG, that will edge slide out and in, and it can tighten up or loosen the bevel in here. So the topology is good in that sense. It's also good in this sense, as we can, if we need to, add another edge loop here, here, or here, so we can tighten up the topology once again if needed. So this is called edge flow, and you need your edge flow surrounding areas where you have creases. So this is all okay. So how do we fix this point in here? Well, the simple option is to grab the vertices and slide them onto each other. So if I go to vertex mode with one, I can grab this vertex here and GG, slide it across to hit the other one. Now at the moment, when I slide this across, you can see my shape changing. That's because I've got clipping on and that means the vertices join together. You can also make this happen all over your mesh if you turn this option on, which I already have on up here. Up in the option panel, you'll only see this in edit mode. So I'm in edit mode and I've got the options. I've got auto merge turned on. So if I turn that off and I'll drag it towards this one over here, so GG, slide it towards this one and it's hit that one and it's not going any further, left click. But if I press GG again, it's not actually joined. So although it hit the other one, it didn't merge. When I turn this auto merge option on and press GG, it will hit it, left click. And now when I press G, it's joined together. So I'll undo that. The reason I chose that one is because when it hits the middle here, it's got clipping turned on, so it will theoretically merge. So GG, move it to this one, and it's merged. But we've still got this old face in here. So let's go to face mode with three on my keyboard, select that face and delete it. Now we've got a hole, but I can just grab this, G then Y, move it across and join it together. So there's a very brief introduction to how you can merge your vertices and tidy up your meshes. Let's do the same thing over here. So I'll click on one of these, press full stop on my numpad to zoom in, and let's delete this face first. So three, select the face and delete faces. We've got that hole, so I can go back to vertex mode, select that vertex, G then X, and slide it together. This one, I can actually press G then X, or I can press GG to edge slide into there. So not a particularly complicated shape today, but hopefully some useful pointers so you can start to easily tidy up meshes where things have gone a bit wrong. Remember, try to think about your edge flow so that at any point you can add an edge loop nice and easily to sharpen points up and the edge flow should go around areas where there's a crease. Now one last thing, I'll right click on this and shade smooth. So it's looking similar to our other one. Slightly different shape, but it doesn't matter too much. I'll show you very quickly how I textured it. So let's go up to the shading tab up here and I'll click on EV over there. I use cycles eventually because I think it gave a better render, but I am in look dev mode at the moment, which uses EV. So let's set it up in EV, create a new texture. Now I found it was a bit too glossy. Let's change the color to, let's say a blue. It just seems a bit too shiny. So I did turn the specular down and that's the sort of sheen that comes off the shape. I just felt it was a bit too much. So about 0.2 seemed to make more sense. The roughness itself is fairly good. I lowered it very slightly. Now, if you're going to use Eevee, what you will definitely want turned on, let's go across to Eevee. You'll want the ambient occlusion turned on and you can see it having a bit of an effect there and screen space reflections. Can you see how flat it looks? Screen space reflections. I've turned half trace off, so it's a bit more precise. However, let's go across the cycles 
I'll turn my GPU on and go to rendered mode. It does give a nicer look, doesn't it? One last thing to note is that I have an HDRI in the background. So Shift A to add, texture, environment texture, and you need to find an HDR image from something like Texture Haven. Looking at it again, I'll go back to object mode and just show you the difference. So I've brought the roughness down a bit and specular down a bit. Let's have a look at this one. Specular's down a bit more. I think it looks a bit better as well. Last thing I've added is an ambient occlusion node. I'll just take that off. You can see the tiny bit of difference it makes if I plug it back in. I can't mute it because it will delete the color. <laughs> and you can add an ambient occlusion node with Shift A, Input, Ambient Occlusion. Because lots of people have been asking me how my renders look so nice. I often use that ambient occlusion node just to give them that bit of depth. So there we have it. A nice simple one today, but an introduction to topology. Do have a look at my other courses and do let me know how you're getting on in the comments below or get across to the Discord server. And remember to tag me on there so I can easily see your work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.